Hi, I'm Chris Cathy, a communications student at GRCC. And I'm Brittany Mosley, also a communications student at GRCC. And we'll be right back with a look inside your community's college. Welcome back. We're wrapping up a busy year at GRCC and we have a lot of stories to share. For instance? For instance, we'll show you a very valuable donation to our automotive program from Nissan. We'll show you how our fashion design students demonstrate their skills. And we'll learn more about our Older Learner Center's 10th anniversary. We will also see how our LEED certified remodeling project is doing. We'll follow a GRCC graduate as she lands her first job in biomedical research We'll hear a debate about the existence of Sasquatch, and we'll salute the long career of calculus professor David Pruis. So let's get started. GRCC's automotive program provides students with the skills they need to diagnose and repair all types of cars and trucks. Now these are valuable skills in an economy that is forcing all of us to keep our old vehicles running. Recently, in order to keep our classes up to date, GRCC was the recipient of four cars and SUVs from Nissan. Vehicles equipped with the most advanced features that you'll find anywhere. We're standing in front of four Nissan vehicles that were donated by Nissan North America. And these vehicles are used to train the students in various disciplines in automotive repair. Electrical, heating and air conditioning, brakes, suspension steering alignment, electronics, drivability, fuel systems, ignition systems. And these vehicles now are used by the students to perform various repairs and also labs. So they can learn how to do the repairs when they enter a dealership or an independent repair shop. Technology increases uh, exponentially almost every year, every model year. So this enables the students to stay current with all the new features, the new uh, way of repair, the new systems, so that when they enter a dealership or an independent repair shop, they can have those skills ready to repair those cars. They don't have to kind of get up to speed, they already are there. So newer cars like this really help the students be prepared for when they enter the job market. To learn more about our automotive program, please visit grcc.edu or call 234-GRCC. One of the architectural gems on campus is a classic Heritage Hill home known as the McCabe Marlowe House. GRCC hosts many events in this elegant location and every year our fashion and design students have the task of decorating it for the holidays. The house project, the McCabe Marlowe House, is owned by the college and has been an opportunity for the visual merchandising class to have that as a major project. So we get to coordinate and decide, design, complete all the decorations for the holidays for the house which is a great opportunity for us, for the students, to be able to do something real for someone else besides me. The process for this particular project for this class uh, begins with the students being assigned a certain room or a certain area of the house, and they work in teams. They have to come up with thumbnails, sketches, ideas of, of what they're perceiving their designs to be. We have an opportunity to go up to the house we get a tour of the house and we look at all the decorations and materials that were there from previous years of which they can pool from. They have a budget to work within and so each group works independently but still has to relate to each other in their areas. And they have to come up with their design ideas, their sketches, their list of items that they're going to need to purchase, what's there that they can use, and then get their designs approved by me. And then we have several days up at the house where they actually go in, install, and work on the, the projects up there at the house. It's been great working in a house that is over 142 years old. 
um, working with the students and putting together a great project in this house has been amazing. I've learned a lot about working in the house, um, a lot of techniques of tools, of hiding cords, working with wires, um, hiding tape, any kind of things that are going to make everything look picture perfect because when you look at something you do not want to see any flaws. The students love the hands-on opportunity and that's what really gets them excited about actually taking this class. Even though it's required, they really want to get into it early in the game uh, because it is a real project and it's just a great experience for them. This class has got me ready for leaving GRCC by teaching me the techniques and the tools of working with interior design. With working in interior design, you have to be able to work with the construction and the interiors. Everyone has to work together to make everything work well together. If everything is chaos, nothing will come together. So everything has to be picture perfect. I recommend for incoming students um, that they come with an open mind, ready to work, hands-on. Interior design is not just colors, it's all about hands-on and loving the fun of it. Um, working with techniques, tools, everything. To learn more about this program or to check on renting the McCabe Marlowe House for your event, please call 234-GRCC. Our foundation office would be happy to give you a tour. Since late in 1998, Grand Rapids Community College has offered a unique learning opportunity for older adults. In the decades since it was created, our Older Learners Center has an impressive list of accomplishments. See for yourself! Just over 10 years ago, Grand Rapids Community College had the foresight to establish the Older Learner Center. Since its modest inception, the center has grown dramatically, serving hundreds of seniors and their families in our community. By adding one program at a time, the center has become an award-winning home for innovative learning. In 1998, we helped establish the Grand Kent Community Consortium on Successful Aging. That year, we also launched the first of 30 episodes of the Successful Aging television series, winning three National Telly Awards. In 1999, we began the publication and distribution of the Kent County Resource Roadmap on Successful Aging. In 2000, the Senior Computer Club started. Housed at GRCC, the club today is stronger than ever. Oh, come and join. It's a lot of fun. You'll learn a lot, and it's, and it's a great thing to keep your mind active. 2001 saw the start of the Senior Health Club, we also assumed the administration of Senior Leadership Grand Rapids and helped establish the Caregiver Resource Network. 2003 witnessed the beginning of the Greater Grand Rapids End of Life Coalition as well as the Older Learner Center Scholarship Fund. 2004 brought the national distribution of the Successful Aging Program as well as our first Lodge and Learn Elder Hostel Learning Sessions. We also held the first session of Grandparents Raising Grandchildren. The issue today was basically uh, dealing with our adult child, uh, which in this case is the father of our two grandchildren. You got to relate to the older, the parents of the kids, just as well as you do the grandchildren. In 2005, we began the Gerontology Certificate Program at GRCC. We also started the Life History Club. We added senior health education classes, and we earned the Larry Murray Award from the local area agency on aging. In 2006, Project Mature Worker was underway, helping to place seniors in jobs that take advantage of their well-developed skills. We also saw the Life Learning Network begin, and we were recognized by no less than the AARP as a best practice model in their September 2007 report. 2008 has seen the launch of a certificate in aging. We've held numerous events as fundraisers for our activities, and we celebrate our 10th anniversary by hosting columnist Amy Dickinson as part of our diversity lecture series. We have formed the Older Learner Center basically to look at what are the needs of our older adult population. As a community college, we need to serve the whole community, and that includes older adults because we're in a rapidly aging society. So this is really hopefully the first of many programs and classes and seminars that we'll make available to older adults here at the college. A lot has happened in 10 years, but we know we're just at the beginning of a long journey. Whatever the future may hold, we hope you will be a part of it, helping us continue to meet the learning needs of a rapidly aging society. Again, to learn more about the Older Learners Center, please call 234-GRCC or visit grcc.edu. 
Our Building Trades program has the ability to not only see a diamond in the rough, but they can also extract that diamond and make it shine. Our first LEED certified remodeled home is a great example of that ability. Let's take a look at how this project has progressed over the last semester. Welcome back to our beautiful home that we're working for the GRCC Construction Remodeling Program. As you can see, a lot has changed since the last time we visited this home. The vinyl siding has been uh, replaced and installed with new siding. Uh, we've put new uh, white corner fixtures. Uh, any trim fixtures uh, that we see on the house has been replaced in white. You can see the faucet uh, has a new white fixture. The venting that you have here, and we'll take a walk over, this is for the ERV system that we talked about last time. You have an in exhaust and an intake, uh, and the ERV, uh, as we tighten the thermal envelope of the house up, the ERV lets the house breathe. It constantly rotates air through, and again, for lead, we want to have a good indoor air quality. So that has been replaced. This is the exhaust with a flapper to keep uh, any rodents out of the home, which is a good thing. Uh, in the front of the home, the shrubbery has been removed. Uh, that's in anticipation of our native plants that we'll be putting in. Um, again, part of what we're doing here for the lead is to keep uh, sustainable native plants. Um, the front walk is going to be removed. As you can see, it slopes down here towards the house. What we want to do is we want to slope that away from the home. We want to try to keep the water outside of the home. Uh, why don't we take a walk in the back? We're working on the deck and uh, we'll take a look at some of the materials we're using back there and see what some of the students are doing. Welcome to the back of the house. As you can see, the deck that was there uh, has been drastically modified. We took the treated lumber that was on for the decking, we recycled it. Mark, one of our students here, is working on some uh, decorative top pieces, took the uh, decking home and he's making planter boxes out of it. Again, part of LEED is to keep things out of the landfill and so we were able to reuse the treated lumber to another purpose. Uh, the decking that you see is a composite decking. It's made from uh, recycled uh, plastics and also has a wood content to it. The spindles are also uh, full plastic, so again, it's, uh, it's a recyclable product. Uh, low maintenance and uh, tremendous wear and it's uh, very sustainable because it'll be here for a long time for the homeowner with uh, very little maintenance. Uh, we'll be adding a staircase over here. Um, we put it on this side of the steps because there's two windows in the back of the home. As you can see, we didn't want to intrude on the windows. So by putting the stairway here, we'll get a full view of the windows looking out into the backyard. The stairs have been installed and the students did a very nice job with this. The riser heights are all equal which might seem like a trivial point, but it's uh, very hard for ca carpenters at times to estimate the riser heights and do a very consistent job. They've done a nice job with this. As you can see, it's a very solid staircase, very sustainable, and uh, it'll be here for a long time, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, trying to build a nice quality product for the homeowner that'll be taking over the home. So let's take a moment, we'll go inside, and we'll show you some of the other modifications that have been done since the last time we visited with each other. The last time we visited, we talked about the furnace being set. Now the furnace is fully installed, the ductwork is in, the exhaust and intake are set. Uh, and one important thing to point out is that, as you can see, the ductwork is all now taped. Uh, this seals the ductwork, the furnace can work more efficiently, and uh, again, it's a standard that LEED has us do. Um, the air filter is in place, all the ductwork you can see is caulked here, and then they did a nice job taping this. So the next time we visit with each other, hopefully the hot water tank will be gone and we'll have the new high efficiency hot water tank in its place. A uh, little modification that's been done, the old inefficient hot water tank has been replaced by a power vented hot water tank. Uh, the purpose of this is uh, it vents out the gases, as you can see this pipe going out to the outside. It's a more efficient way to heat uh, the water and it also has a higher recovery than our traditional hot water tank and again it's more efficient, it's going to save our homeowner more money. Um, let's take a walk over to the bedroom and show you, uh, last time we were here we had the rim joist sprayed with uh, foam and we can show you that process as far as repairing that and some of the other modifications we're doing in the basement. Juan's doing a very nice job with the drywall compound. As you can see, he's putting in nice thin coats. There's going to be very minimal sanding. Again, the important thing is that we don't want to breathe in the dust that's created by sanding drywall. A nice quality job that he's doing there is going to be very much appreciated and also for the structure, it's going to improve the indoor air quality because you don't have to have all those dust particles in the air and breathing those in. 
couple things that we've done in the room too since we visited last is that a bulkhead has been built and the drywall is being installed and this will be finished also, hiding the ductwork that we uh, have in place. Uh, this closet, this is just a little alcove before the students decided to make this into a closet, which is a really nice idea since this bedroom wouldn't have had a closet. So as you can see, the room is on track to being finished here very soon, and it's going to be a very nice addition to this home. I actually was at the park one day. It was just a fluke that it happened, and Habitat was there signing up applicants, and I signed up last year, August, and here I am now. It feels amazing. I can't wait to move in. It's definitely a blessing. I have three little boys, and they're a little nervous to have their own room, but they're very excited they'll have a, a home of their own. My family is very supportive, so they're extremely happy also. And yes, you can check out our Building Trades program online or by calling 234-GRCC. GRCC graduates travel far and wide once they leave here. Some of our former students, who are interested in the sciences and engineering, participated in a unique program called MyCup. This program allowed them to transfer from GRCC to Michigan Tech and succeed. One example of that success is Rocio Garcia. I was in Grand Rapids Community College. Anna Clark was my advisor, and she told me about this program. And then Madeline Walker came to visit, and she gave a presentation about the MICO program. And that's how I met Madeline and all the program. Then I finished um, at GRCC. I went one summer to, to Michigan Tech to do the MICO program, and then I liked going to Michigan Tech, and I decided to transfer over there. Academically, uh, I, it, was a, it was hard to start with because the, the GRCC has certain level of requirements and in, when you go to the university, those requirements increase and the classes are harder. And be, being my co program, it helped me to, to solve that transition. It was a smooth, uh, it was different. And it, I, there was a lot of uh, leadership activities where I can improve. There is uh, around 200 organizations in the university and you can get in there and practice leadership skills and it was helpful. I was looking for a job that was health related but doesn't have too much patient content, contact and it was kind of hard to find. Finally I decided to do lab, uh, be a lab technician but when I transferred to Michigan Tech, I, I get to know that there is a different types of lab technician and one of them was cytotechnologist and that's how I get introduced to that. Here I am, my, my position is cytotechnologist. Most of the time I, go, I work in front of the microscope. I, my position is a search for cancer, uh, looking at cells or slides and search for cancer. And that's the one part of the job that I do. The other part is uh, go to see the patients and do fine needle aspirations and take the samples from them and then look, uh, look the samples through the microscope. My future, I planning to go a ahead with my studies. I'm planning master, doctorate or PhD. How do you call it PhD? Yes. and. That's so far, probably is going to take me maybe five, five years more of my, my life, so <laughs> that's so far what I'm planning to do. To learn more about the MyCup program, you can visit either our website or Michigan Techs at mtu.edu. One of our communications classes encourages creativity as much as becoming a better communicator. For example, for a recent debate topic, these two students took on the subject of Bigfoot. Does he exist or not? complete with video to, well, prove it. Most children believe in Santa Claus. The Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, Mermaids, and even Monsters Under the Bed are all real in the mind of a child. Eventually, however, as a child grows and matures, the validity of these imaginary creatures is challenged, and the fantasies are left behind with the entering of adolescence. For some reason, though, one that completely evades me some adults choose to revert to these childish behaviors and put faith in the existence of a mythical creature. The mythical creature is Sasquatch, 
or Bigfoot, as some may refer to them as. Now, if a species fitting the criteria of a Sasquatch truly did exist, then conclusive evidence would have been found throughout the years of research that these speculations have been in circulation. Many people have heard of Sasquatch, but do they believe? Without an actual Sasquatch being caught or the remains being found, many argue their existence. But I have four points that will prove to you that he is real. Those being the sightings, the footprints, the films, and lastly, the photos. The Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization is a website devoted to the findings and the evidence of Sasquatch. There have been many sightings recorded on this website. One personal experience was that listed by Albert Osman, an avid outdoorsman. He remembers when in the middle of the night during a camping trip, he was taken by a male Sasquatch. He was carried to its living area and remained captive by the whole family of Sasquatches until he managed to escape. That website has a database with thousands of sightings, including 95 of those from Michigan. So be careful, you may have a Sasquatch living in your backyard. The second evidence is footprints. The Bigfoot Fact or Fiction website author, John Napier, who is a wildlife biologist, says that Sasquatch prints range from 14 inches to 24 inches long. The average male's footprints is 10.4 inches long, and the average female is 9.5 inches long. The third evidence is film. The first major film sighting of Sasquatch was by Rod Roger Patterson in 1965. He and a friend, who is also an avid outdoorsman, went out to film the wilderness, and what do they find? A Sasquatch. This is a film put on by the Discovery Channel in two parts. The film also mentions thigh movement, which cannot be replicated in a monkey suit. The fourth evidence is photos. The Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization asked for people to put photos up of their Sasquatch evidence. In 2007, a man by the last name of Jacobs put up a motion sensor camera in his woods to film wildlife for hunting purposes. In the photos, there were squirrels, deer, and black bear. The first photo of black bears led to an interesting series of photos. The first one is just clearly black bears. In this next photo, the thing by the tree is unclear. It could be a bear or it couldn't. Is it a Sasquatch? The next photo clearly is. As you can see, with all the evidence of sightings, footprints that are left behind, videos, and recent photos, how can anyone not believe? I know I definitely don't believe still. Now, one of my opponent's main points was this Patterson film. First of all, it's over 40 years old, as I've already stated. Now, if there really were Sasquatches, then there would be more recent videos. But just looking at this specific video. Now, although no one has proved that it's fake, no one has proved it's real either. Also, from Dr. Fahrenbach's website, on the Patterson video, he said, quote, there is no unanimous agreement within the scientific community that the Patterson video is in fact valid. Now, once again, he is a Sasquatch believer and he won't even put on his own website that the video is 100% real. Now, you ask the question, why haven't we found any bodies and why haven't we found any remains? Well, in an article titled, Where is the Evidence, written on the uh, Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization website, because a Sasquatch is part human, they understand burying their dead, which is why we haven't found any bodies or bones. So, you can either pretend like he's not real, or you can look at the facts and know that he's real. 
Just in case you missed the finer points of that debate, you can watch it again online. Just go to grcc.tv or visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash grcc. While we have many excellent professors at GRCC, some stand out above the rest. And when an exceptional professor leaves, it's only fitting that we take time to reflect on his career. David Pruis, who has been a full-time math instructor for decades, is retiring. And since he was the first instructor to offer video podcasts of his lectures, we were lucky to have plenty of footage to choose from to illustrate his unique sense of humor. So we do our best to expand your mathematical abilities, especially for good sound reasoning. Here is another reason you can use for not getting your homework done. These work for me, so I pass them along to you. Welcome back to Early Morning Calculus. Can you hear me okay? Is that sort of a yes? How about a real yes? Just to get us started this morning, you're somebody's version of the local math book. Do you read it much? Does it put you to sleep at night? I don't know. Do you think he has credentials to judge? Seems like he might, right? Just to expand your knowledge of mathematics a little bit, we have this for you. It always kind of bothers me that there's these misconceptions in history. Maybe we can use some of our time to clarify some of that stuff. And there's a few more, but at least we take care of this first. Well, that's our show for this month. We hope that we've given you a sense of some of the many things happening at your community's college. And remember, you can watch this show as well as many other college-related events online at grcc.tv, on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash grcc, on Comcast Cable on channels 28 or 902, and on AT&T UVerse on channel 99. Many choices to choose from, so there's no reason to miss a thing. Thanks for watching.